Here we have a student. Let's name him John. John is in a class of 25 people. He's an average student, which means that he is number 13 on all of his assignments. One day, a researcher sitting in her office has an idea. She has just thought of a great intervention for students, but she needs to test this idea. So, she approaches John's school and gets permission to perform an experiment using two classes, John's and one other in the same grade. To measure the impact of the intervention, the researcher gives a pretest to get a baseline. When she analyzes the results, she sees that the two classes are just about equal. This means that John, the average student in his class, receives just about the same grade as the average student in the other class. So the researcher decides to give John's class the intervention she has thought of and does nothing with the second class so that they are the control. Then the researcher gives a post-test to see how well the intervention worked. If it did not work, she expects John to still be equal with the average student in the other class. But when she analyzes the data, she finds that they are not equal, that, in fact, John's class has improved a lot. The researcher then calculates the effect size for the intervention, or how well the intervention worked, and finds that the effect size for her intervention was 1.7. But what exactly does this mean? Well, if we look at our two classes again, and we remember that John was the average student, we will see what different effect sizes mean for him. For an effect of zero, if we took John out of his class and moved him to the class that did not receive the intervention, he would still be average, number 13. This means that nothing changed, the intervention had no effect. But if we saw an effect of 0.3 and we took John from his class after the intervention and moved him to the other class, he would now be number 10. He is now performing better than a majority of students in the class on the post-test. But what happens with even larger effect sizes? An effect of 0.8 would mean that John, if he were transferred to the class that did not get the intervention, would be 6th. An effect size of 1.6 is even greater. He would now place 1st in the class that did not receive the intervention. An effect size of 2 means that we could take John from his class and place him in a group of 44 peers that did not receive the intervention, and he would still be on top of that group. And the most extreme example we have, an effect size of 3. If John, remember John is an average student in his class, if he were moved to a group of 740 students who did not receive the intervention, he would be on the top of that group. Basically, if we moved him to an elementary school that was equal to his previous school in demographics and performance, but that had never received the intervention, he would be the top of the school, and he was average in his class, and we can assume in his school. This is an extremely effective intervention. So. Where does that leave our researcher from before? Remember, the effect size of her intervention was 1.7. So, the average student, John, from the experimental class, the one that received the intervention, would be in the top of the control class, the one that did not receive the intervention, if he were moved there afterwards. So, we can say there was a large effect. In summary, effect sizes tell us how much impact an intervention had. Remember, we want to see an effect size of at least 0.3 to say it was effective. Thanks for watching. Feel free to contact me for more information on this topic.